himself a little party. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to be with his buddies. So I gladly said yes. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> he, um, but he was back. He was at the barracks. Uh, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and then the following Wednesday night, is the uh, he told me he wanted to take me out to the golf course and teach me how to play golf. He had had he learned to had a professional golfer, and he had taken a group out to the golf course and taught them how to play golf. And he, uh, whenever he had any free time, he'd go out to the golf play. So he took me out there. We picked out a club and uh, the bucket of balls. And then we walked over to the driving range. And he showed me how to stand and how to hold the club, how to swing it. Keep your eye on the ball. Well, this I could stand, swing it, but that, oh, get that, that was gone before I could get it. My, my daughter, what about my daughter, she plays golf. She said, it takes a long time before you. <laughs> so after about a half an hour, he decided he had to have a cigarette. Well, he couldn't smoke there. It was a grassy knoll off to the side. And uh, we uh, went over there and he lit up his cigarette and he stretched out of the uh, ground, and I got away from him, and my, cause I didn't want that cigarette smoke, and we were talking, and all of a sudden he quieted down, he didn't say anything. He drove over at him, he was smoking, and all of a sudden I heard him say, you want to get married before the war ends? <laughs> I said, I'd love to. And that was it. <laughs> we, uh, he finished his cigarette and we stood outside the fence there. And I told him, I got a 72 coming up. The 19th, 20, 21st, and overnight on the 18th. And I'm going home that weekend because it's my folks' anniversary. And I want to be home there with them. Never said a word. And uh, once we, uh, <clears throat> we walked around, of course, we weren't in uniform. We couldn't go to any place. So we had just could do walking. And um, walked and talked. And I know what time it was, when, I know it was after 10 o'clock, but uh, Went back to the barracks, and um, he went and found there was. I believe every area had a bo uh, a building where they had telephone booths. The booths slid around, and uh, he went and got into one of them. And he called his folks. Eleven o'clock out there. It's eight o'clock here. So he called his folks and told them. He was getting married the 18th of May. <laughs> and, but, uh, and for them to take him, go to the bank in the morning and have the bank wire him $500. So they did. And he, uh, after he secured the barracks, he went out and picked up the uh, the money, then you got a hold of the priest, and the per the chaplain had a office in his building, in his barracks, and he used to spend quite a bit of time there with them, and and I'm sure I was in the, his program, and because uh, he was worried that three thousand miles difference, he didn't know what to do. But then he broke down and that was it. <laughs> so we got married. We went to Boston. 
and come back. It, uh, <clears throat> we had no place to stay with one of his buddies. <clears throat> uh, was living off base in an old farmhouse, and uh, you know, it was a tobacco plant. They call it plantations, and uh, there was a room in there. So he took Clem out. Clem looked it over, and that's where we were to stay. So we stayed there, <laughs> and and we said. Uh, Lee, he uh, got shipped out, and we moved into his, his what we had was just a bedroom with a, uh, a little pot belly stove. But what they had was a bedroom and a kitchen. So we moved into that there until the war ended, and uh, Clem was transferred to uh, Paris Island, and of course I was stayed at Camp Lejeune, and he came. Uh, he left just before Labor Day. At the, what the war ended the fourteenth of August, <coughs> and uh, the um, he got down there, and he went right away put into a schooling to become a DI. <coughs> and uh, he, uh, he was with the platoon three days. They pulled the senior DI. They made him the senior DI. And Another kid, another two kids, the junior DIs. So that was it. And he uh, got to come up on a weekend up to Wilmington. And I met him in Wilmington. I, it was a last minute notice. And uh, of course, you couldn't get into the hotels. So I would. I would and over the U.S. or who the heck I went to, and see if they knew where you'd get a, a room. People were renting, renting out their rooms that weren't occupied, and uh, they gave me the address of one, and I went over there, got it, and the, he got in at 10 o'clock at night, and uh, I met him in there, went back to spend the night there. Mm. It was Sunday we went to church, and at noontime he was back on the bus to South Carolina, <laughs> and I was back to Camp Lejeune. <laughs> and then I went to a time and went down, spent a weekend down there in Paris Island, and he, uh, then they came out with the order of instruction. An a gal whose husband was stateside or had been discharged could apply to get out. So that's what I did. And uh, was, he had been coming up, he couldn't make it. And I told him, told him, don't worry, I said, I'm getting out. So the last day of uh, October, October, <coughs> Then October thirty first, I was on the bus to South Carolina. <laughs> Incredible, huh? Mm hmm. We were married sixty four and a half years. <laughs> That's a long time. Yes, it is. Wow. Mm -hmm. Got some more questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, was that common for people to decide to get married and? go off and do that so quickly? I don't know. Some of them were getting married in weeks. Oh yeah. So can you tell me about your wedding? Did you have uh, your friends and stuff there or was it a small ceremony? Very small. We had, I had nuptial mass, 
the uh, in the morning. If I waited until the afternoon, the church would have been full of all the uh, guys that come in the base. That uh, these special prayers for marriage, nuptial mass they call it, for the couple. Uh, the priest could not convert that prayer for the couple at the afternoon mass. So I just will get married in the morning. <laughs> and that was at the church at Camp Lejeune? At the chapel at Camp Lejeune. Um, did you have a bridesmaid? And, uh, huh? Did you have your friends as your bridesmaids? Just my, just Jane was my girlfriend, my, my maid of honor. What about your husband? Who was his best man? His was the fellow we went to Kentucky with. He had get married the week before we did. <laughs> mm. huh. So can you tell me about the day the war ended? What, what do you remember about that day? Uh... Let's see. It, we got the news. I was working the, the five to eight shift. Uh, <clears throat> first thing was it red came out. The war is over with. Well, of course, the people had heard before we did, and uh, they started coming to the PX. We told them to go home. The war's over with. Get out of here. <laughs> the uh, band started marching up and down. We had a w the women's marines had their own band, and they marched up and down the street. And uh, finally, Red went over and shut the door. No more coming in. Get out. <laughs> we went to uh, we went to church. Prayers of Thanksgiving that the war is over with. What do you was that a tearful day or was that a, a happy? What do you? It remember? was a happy day when that ended. <laughs> when you got married, did your husband wear his dress blues and everything? Or? No, he didn't. The temperature was ninety-five degrees at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had dress blues, but. That's the purse behind him there. That's uh, made out of his dress blues. <laughs> I really like that. I've never seen that before. That's, that's, <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Um, and there's a small, this is a bigger one picture up here on the wall of our wedding picture. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. Incredible. Incredible. Let's see. Did you ever feel that uh, people, as a female Marine, that some guys treated you different because you were... A female, or did you get respect because you were in the Marine Corps? We were respected. It, you had both kinds of guys. That uh, You didn't have to talk very long, maybe five minutes. You knew what they were like. You had an idea whether you wanted to go out with him or not. So. What about your husband? What did you think in the first five minutes of meeting him? Well, I thought he had a sense of humor. <laughs> Is that important for you? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Let's see. Did you stay in contact with any of your friends from the Marine Corps after the war? Uh, I, uh, like well, it. They stayed in there. They didn't get, I got out in October. They didn't get out until, uh, February. And, uh, I, when I left, I didn't take anything. But I did have, a picture of our group, the, uh, a lot of them had signed on the back at their name and their address. And then I, get, uh, I wrote to Jane and she married a kid from New York. She was from Wisconsin and when I, our first child was born, uh, I sent her an announcement, and is it? Um, so she she wrote me back. Needed weighed nine pounds one ounce, and uh, she said, "Isn't that a bit awful big baby?" 
She said, her, her said weighed 10 pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, of her, I got a picture of another, uh, another gal, Jane, uh, Peggy, and uh, was when she got, she met a fella, and uh, her tenth night out, he presented her with a diamond. <laughs> you know, she says, I'm not getting married right away. She waited a, a month or two before she got married. So when I started going with Clement, they kept reminding me, Peggy got her ring 10 days when you hit yours. <laughs> yeah. So how long did you know Clement before you married him? How long was that time where you guys dated? Uh, January, we started dating. January till April, to May, about three months before he. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so when did he finally get out of the service? He got out and uh, when he went and he signed up for four years, and uh, he got out in uh, forty six, July of forty six. They had uh, what happened. They had a girl from Rockford that worked in the draft office, and she went around and took the numbers of all the fellas around there. And uh, she'd go every morning, go in there and watch and see how close they were getting to the hopper. And she would tell me, your number is getting close. And there was a kid tell them, go pick what you want, otherwise you're going to get drafted. And Clem and the other fella, they won the Air Force. They went in and uh, signed up for the Air Force, took their physicals, and the test and all. Well, they weren't taking them right then and there. And so not knowing where the number was, they went out the door, across the hall, was the uh, Marine Ace. So went in there, signed up there, and uh, they took, Pat took the test, passed the physical, raise your hand, right then and there, you're a Marine. So he, uh, they waited a while and then off to Dago. He was in boot camp three weeks. He got a letter from the Air Force, congratulations, you've been accepted. <laughs> kind of late. <laughs> I'll say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he was sent overseas for two years. He spent a year in Majuro and the Andrew on Palmyra, a year on each island. Mm -hmm. Were you two, were you happy that he was getting out? Uh, oh, yeah. What did he do after the war, work-wise? He's a farmer. I became a farm wife. <laughs> what did you think of that? It was all right. I had good in-laws. <laughs> Where was the farm? In Rockford. So what kind of responsibilities were yours uh, in the family? Oh. I don't know, it's it like anything new. We had uh, chickens and uh, he had milk cows and separated them, get the cream, take, moved, took the cream into town. And, um, and then he said, uh, well, in 1969, he decided he was going to go full. Blast with the hogs. The uh, the barn was in '65. He had trouble with his uh, elbows, milking the cows, and he went to the doctor. The doctor said, "I you got two choices. I can op operate and take that crud out of there, or you can give up milking." 
he picked to give up milking. And of course the, the barn was empty. So then he uh, took a remodel of the barn and we put, he got into the hog business. And in the summertime, when he was in the field, being in the south of Farrowin, I'd be out in the barn with them. And, and at night, he'd be in there. And that was it. The winter time, he took care of them all the time. And he'd go as much as 72 hours without seeing the bed <laughs> in the south of Farrowin. He was a pretty hard worker then, wasn't he? He was. Very hard. <clears throat> How many kids did you guys have? We had five daughters. Five daughters? Wow, I bet he wanted a son. <laughs> huh? I bet he wanted a son, no, 